Hello and welcome to episode 10 of our SNAP series. Today I'll be providing some assistance with Lab 3 Making Decisions in Unit 2 Abstraction of the BGC Curriculum for APCSP. Before we start, a quick reminder that these videos are made entirely to assist students who need help with these labs. And remember that if you're using these videos, then please make sure you honor the academic integrity policies set forth by your school. Okay, so the first part of this lab deals with predicates, which are blocks that output Boolean values, meaning true or false. So now the first task you must do is to create a script that can 1. write on the stage by following our cursor, and 2. have the color change depending on our cursor location. So first we can make the turtle follow our cursor by just having a forever loop, which is under the control tab, and in that, taking a go to block from the motion tab, and setting that to mouse pointer. Now if we go, well first if we run this, and then go to the pen tab and set, put the pen down, you'll see that the turtle now follows our cursor, and it leaves, you know, a drawing behind, whatever you want to make. So that's the first part covered, but then we still have to make the color of the pen change depending on the cursor location on the stage. So if we could stop this. Now we could just go to the control tab and take one of these if else blocks and drag it to our scripting area. Then if we go to the operators tab, we can see that we can select from this less than or greater than predicates. I'm going to take the greater than predicate put it into this section of the if else block. Now if we go to the sensing tab, we can see that one of these blocks is mouse y. What mouse y is, is that it just outputs the value, the y value of our mouse cursor, of course, because it's mouse y, mouse x is up here. So it'll output the y value of our mouse cursor relative to the stage, assuming that the center of the stage is y0. So I'm going to take this mouse y and put it into the left side of our predicate. And uh, we're going to leave the right side blank for now. And what we want this if else to do is when mouse y is above a specific value, we want the color of the turtle to change, which will thus change the color of the line it draws. So if we go to the pen tab, we can see that we have the option of taking this set pen color to block. So we can take two of these, put one in each section of the if else block, and we can change the colors to whatever we want. I'm just going to have green and, oh, that was, that's a fine color blue whatever, green and red. So now we can put in the value we want here, I'm just gonna put zero. So now if mouse Y is greater than zero, the pen color will be set to green. And if it isn't greater than zero, then the pen color will be set to red. So now we can put the pen down, I'm gonna clear the stage. And then we can run this, and then put this inside. So now, you'll see the turtle is following our mouse cursor. Down here, it's drawing red, and once we pass y equals zero, it's now green. Then the next part of this page just requires you to script it so that the turtle only draws when you're holding down your mouse button. We can do this easily by first going to the control tab and taking another if else block. Now for the predicate of this if else block, if we come over to the sensing tab, we can see that one predicate available to us is a mouse down. What this predicate does is it will output true if your mouse is down when it checks for your mouse being down. So we can take this and put it into the predicate of the if block. And then we can take this if else block that we put in this forever loop into this if section. So now if your mouse is down and mouse y is greater than zero, it'll set the pen color to green or else it will set the pen color to red. But we want it to only also draw when the mouse is down. So if we go to the pen tab, we can take this pen down block and put it above the if else block. So now before it does this, the pen will be down. But pen down is sort of permanent in a way. Once the pen is down, it will always be down unless you pick the pen back up. And so that's why we need to take a pen up block and put it into the else section of this bigger if else block. Now if we put this in the forever loop and we run it, it should work as intended. You see, it's not drawing anything because the pen is currently up since my mouse is not being held down. Now, if I hold my mouse down, it'll turn to red. Ah, that's the problem. You see, you have to uncheck this draggable box or else sometimes Snap will just think you're trying to drag the sprite when you're actually trying to draw something. So once we make this not draggable and then we hold down our mouse button, you can see that it draws red when it's below y equals zero. And once we go above, it's green again. So we can see that everything is working as intended. Now on to the next page. Following experimentation, you are tasked to create some Boolean functions by combining multiple predicates. 
I will demonstrate how to make one of them, and then briefly touch upon the others since they are more or less the same concept. So let's say we want to make a less than or equal to block. First we click make a block, and make sure that predicate is selected, and let's make it an operator. And bjc.edc.org provides you with the symbols for less than, greater than, or not equal to. So I have this less than or equal to sign right here. And then we get to the block editor. Now because less than or equal to compares two values, we first click the plus in front of the symbol and make an input. I'm just going to call this value A. And then the, the plus after it, make another input called value B. So then we want this report to report true if A is less than or equal to B. To do this, we can go to the operators tab and we can make use of some of the predicates that they give us here. So because it's less than or equal to, we can take the or, we can put it into the report, and then we want to check to see if A is less than B. So we can take this less than predicate and put it into one side, drag A less than B, and then we also want to check to see if they're equal to each other. So we can take this equal to predicate, value A is equal to value B, and then it should be done. If we take this and we test it, let's put 5 is less than or equal to 10, it should output true, which it does. But if we put 15 is less than or equal to 10, it should output false. And if we write 10 is less than or equal to 10, it should output true again. So you would apply basically the exact same concept to the greater than or equal to block and the not equal to block, although for the not equal to block you'll probably need to use this not predicate also found under the operators tab. Then we need to make a between block. To do this we once again have to go and make a block, make it a predicate and an operator, and we'll call it is between and. Uh, then from there we need to make three inputs. So we have an input, I'm going to call them values A through C for simplicity. Value A is between value B and value C. Then we need to put them into an AND predicate, which is found on the operators tab. And then we have to check to see if a is greater than or equal to value B, and if value A is less than or equal to value C. So we can do this with the predicates that we made in the last section. So first we'll check if A, uh, I'll do it the other way around. If A is greater than or equal to B, and A is less than or equal to value C. Hit apply, let me drag it out. We can test this. Let's see, if we have 8 is between oops, 1 and 12, should I put true? Yes, because 8 is between 1 and 12. Um, and because we use the less than or equal to and greater than or equal to blocks, it should also report true if one of the values is the same as it. Yes. And if 8 is between 8 and 8, it should also output true. Yes. But now if we put 10 is between 8 and 8, it's not going to report false, or if 1 is between 8 and 8, it's going to report false as well. Then we have to use this block to make a script where the color of the pen changes to three different ones depending on the cursor's location. So we can take the script we made last time, and instead of this mouse y is greater than 0 predicate, we can take mouse y and check to see if it's between negative 90 and 90. This encompasses roughly half the entire stage, because by default the height of the stage is 360 pixels and 0 is obviously in the middle of that, so negative 90 and 90 should be roughly here and here, so this amount of space. So we can put this in the if block, and now if the mouse is down, the pen will be set down, and then if mouse y is between negative 90 and 90, the pen color will be set to green. So green is what we want in the center. So now if we try this, you can see that once we hold down, it's red down here, and shifts to green, and shifts back to red, which is technically what we want, but at the same time, this is only two colors, and we're trying to make it work with three. So let's stop this. I will clear the stage, set the 
turtle back to the center. And so we can take another if else block in the control tab. And we can take this set pen color to and place it here. So now if uh, we need another between predicate. If mouse y is between, let's say, negative 180, which is the very bottom of the stage, and negative 90, which is where green begins, then this pen color will be set to red. I'm, I'm going to do 91, because so we don't get any interference. And then we put this in the else, move that out of the way. That means that it'll be green in the middle and red down here. And, but we still don't have a color set for the very top of the stage because we left this else blank. So if we go to pen and take set pen color 2, we can set whatever color we want the top of the stage to be. I'm going to take uh, that color a little wider. There we go. It might be hard to see though. So now that we have this, we can run this and we can see how it works. So we have red down here. Seems to be working. And as we go up, it changes to green at y equals negative 90 and then as we go higher up it should change to this grayish color and it's more gray it's more pinkish than gray but we can see that the program is working as intended and we have made it a very strange version of the bulgarian flag in the process And the best part of this is how the way we did this, we have multiple nested conditional statements, conditional statements being the if-else blocks, because we have this if-else nested in this one, which is nested in this one, which also satisfies the question on the next page of unit two, lab three. So we can immediately move on to page four. Okay, so on page four of the lab, you're required to create a dot picture similar to the one provided by changing this predicate in this script, which is also provided. So, if we look at this script and we run it, we should get a design similar to this just by their example. Now, it has a custom block in it called make a point, and it doesn't tell you what's in it, but this is the, a good interpretation. You can set pen size to whatever you want. You could do this outside the block or inside, I just prefer to put it here. Um, put the pen down, you move a step so that the line is actually drawn, and then you pick the pen back up before it goes to another random position so it doesn't end up drawing a line and just puts a dot and leaves it at that. So now we have to edit this predicate, which currently is x position is less than y, sorry, x position is less than y position, so that it resembles this design down here. So how do we go about creating this design? Well, there's multiple ways you can do it, but this is the way I'm going to. So you see how orange begins? somewhere around x equals to 100. Well, I can go to the operators tab, take this operator, this greater than predicate, and I can write when x is greater than 100. And then you see how orange doesn't extend up past about around y equals 90, because then it switches back to purple. Well, we can take a less than, and y is less than 90. So these two predicates together define when you want the drawing to make a orange dot. So if we put that in an and, then this is when we want an orange dot in our design. But if we look here, we can see that if this holds true, then the pen color will be set to purple. So we would have the same drawing except the orange or purple would be switched. So how do we fix that? Well, we can take a not predicate and put this entire predicate in there and into the if. And now if this criteria is not defined, if sorry, if this criteria is not met, then the pen color we set to purple. And this criteria is not met whenever we are not in the orange section of this design. So if we run this, it should output very similarly to what we have in the picture for a few seconds so we can get a more defined picture. But as you can see, we've replicated the design to a pretty accurate degree. 
So that's what these other two pictures are also trying to do. You have to find predicates that can result in the picture that's being given. In a very similar way, you can approach the second picture using this predicate. And finally, you can approach the third picture by using this predicate, although this one does require a lot more trial and error. And with that, we can move on to page 5. Okay, so due to page 5 being mostly just experimentation, we're going to move right along to page 6. Now, the first main challenge of page 6 is to make another predicate custom block, but this time, you have to provide a word input and a number input. And the output of this custom block, being true or false, is determined on whether or not the number of letters in the word you input matches the number you input. So for example, on the BJC website, they the example they give is, does orange have 6 letters, which it does, so therefore it output true. So how can we make this block? Well, they give us a length of text block, so we can use this to make our new one. We can make a block, call it, it does have letters, make it a predicate, and we need to have a word input and a number input. Make sure it's number. All right, now I can use this length of text block as well as this equal reporter. Now we can put this in here, and we can have if length of text, the text being the word, equals number, then this should output true. If we apply, okay, we can test it out. Let's just try their example. Orange, have six letters, outputs true. What if I change it to five? False. Looks like it works. And to finish things off, the last thing you have to do for this page is to make one more custom block. This custom block determines if the place of a letter within a word is the input letter. For example, there they give, is letter 2 of giraffe the letter I? Which, obviously it is, so the block will output true. So how do we make this block? Well, we already have this block here, letter 1 of, so we can use this to make this. Let's make another block, predicate, operator, and call it is letter of the letter. Do we leave room for our inputs? So after is letter, we're going to have a numeric input. We call that num. You could be more creative with your variable names, but I choose not to be. Of, and then you want a word. And then after the letter, you want a character. I'm just going to call it car. So once you do this, you want it to report if a letter number number of the word you want an equal predicate you want to know if that equals the character and apply this should work properly let's try it out with their example is letter two of giraffe did i misspell that i did the letter i is true. Let's try their false example. Is letter 4 of carrot the letter O? It outputs false, as it should. So, now that you have these two blocks, the rest of this page is to just use these two blocks to solve a word search, it looks. No, it's a crossword. It's fill a crossword and for some experimentation. Alright, so that'll do it for episode 10 of the SNAP series. I hope it helped those of you who needed it. And we'll see you later with episode 11.